For the best gameplay capture there is, pick up an Elgato today. Links are in the description. Hey guys, how's it going? Masterbucks here. Welcome to another Newcastle United career mode episode and a brand new season. It's season three. It's the final season. Yes, this is going to be the final career mode season with Newcastle only because the next one that we've got coming up, the brand new career mode that we're going to be doing is finally the road to glory. Pretty soon I'll be announcing the teams that you guys can vote for the road to glory. But for now, let's focus on the Newcastle team. I've slowly built it up and now look at it. Just look at how insane this team has become. We've made two changes to the starting 11, two brand new faces that we got on pre-contract. One is Christian Eriksen, 89 rated. I think when I first got him up, he was only 87. He's jumped up by two overall when he's joined us. And then there's also Aaron Ramsey at the right center, mid, uh, center midfield position. He's 85 rated as well. And again, only like 25, 26 years of age. Our bench is looking solid and really, really strong. We've got a very good, very deep uh, set of reserve players as well that we can call upon. It's just, it's all looking good. I've also sorted myself out with a short list of both center backs, left backs, and then there's also Gabriel Jesus, who's pretty much been in there from the start. I'm not looking to get him at the moment, but I am looking to get a quality center back and a quality left back. Now, I think to start things off, I might want to go for a left back because it's a position that I've wanted to take care of for a while. I actually have never bought a left back during this entire career mode. I've already had, what, Dummett, Hidara, and oh man, I feel really bad because there's definitely another. Lazar, of course, he's the other one. But yeah, I've been going with those three uh, this whole time and not brought in a new one. So I want to bring in a quality one. We've got Benjamin Mendy, who is 78 rated and about the same as Lazar. So I might want to go for someone higher rated. Dalbert looks all right, if that again is how you say it. 24 years of age, 81 rated. He's the guy that I would love to get. So just to start things off in this career mode season, I'm going to start going for both of those two left backs. If Dalbert ends up being way too much money or way too hard for me to get, or if I just can't get him for whatever reason, I can go for Mendy. But trust me, Dalbert's the man that I want. We'll see how things go. He's uh, in a team that's short on players in that position. He's a crucial first team player. I'm not too sure. It might get a bit tricky for signing him, but yeah. We're also going to go for another center back, I reckon, after I've gone and gotten a left back. I've got myself a shitload of players transfer listed as, as well as that a bunch of players loan listed as well. I've still got a bunch of players loaned out too. Really, I've got almost like, what well, like take a look at what it says, 48 out of 52 possible players that I'm allowed to have. I'm nearly stacked. I've nearly completely filled my playing list. But I am hoping to get all of those players that I want transfer listed and all those players that I have loan listed. I just, if possible, I'd love to get them all out. I know it's not going to happen, but that's the dream. I'm also just going to be simulating all the preseason tournament games and all that stuff, except for the final. If we do make it to the final, I'll be sure to play the game. But I'm simulating all of these matches against like Everton, Dortmund, and Real Madrid with a second team here. I don't know how it's <clears throat> I don't know how it's going to go. I'll tell you how it goes. A 4-2 win. That's a ridiculous match. Looking at the drills, by the way, I'm going to be giving out. We've got uh, Killen and Bappi Lotin getting two drills there. Beat your man, chance creation. We've got Harry Winks, Paslak, and Lopez also getting drills. They're the younger players, sort of fringe players, that are right on the edge of getting into the starting 11 one day. And I'd like to train them up because these are also pretty much my backup bench players as well. I just got all these players coming back from loan as well. So that's pretty much more players that I'm pretty much going to try to send back out immediately. Turns out I've also heard back about these left backs that I've been going for and it looks as though Dalbert's going to be pretty expensive and the same can be really said for Mendy. Almost double for both of those players. I originally offered 20, they want 36. If I went and just matched them halfway at 28 million, will that be enough? I'm also just going to bring this up to like you know, 15 mil for Mendy as well, just as again a backup. Now then, another game against Real Madrid. I have also unintentionally and accidentally put my best team out there. I wanted to put my second team. Guarantee you I get an injury. Skip? No, but we do get a draw. Okay, then. My best team could only get, like, a draw against Real Madrid's, like, youth squads. We clearly didn't have a very good day because, I mean, my team at their best are starting to get to a point where we could even rival Manchester... I mean, uh, Real Madrid's bloody team. It's coming along so well, it is just sick. I mean, we are seriously developing, like, a real world-class side here. Monaco have accepted 15 million for Mendy. Again, not the number one player I'm going for, but still good to know. Still haven't actually received any offers for any of the players I've transfer listed or loan listed, but anyway, this is the final group stage game. I think if we draw, it might not be enough. If we lose, I think we might not go through at all, but we've scored early. Let's skip ahead again. 4-1, and oh my god, how about John Joe Shelby with a hat trick against Dortmund? By the way, take a look at that Dortmund side really quickly. 
I don't know what formation they're running, but is Aubameyang playing as a fullback? I got no idea. All I know is that OG Nice have accepted the offer for Dalbert, so that means he is going to be hopefully joining Newcastle if we can agree to a contract. He actually wants to get paid less than Mendy too, so I mean, that's a that's a positive, I suppose. There you go. Are uh, we going to hear back from them before this game against Napoli? We did make the semi-finals. Again, I'm going to sim that, but if we do go through, I'm playing the final. That should be Mendy. It is. I'm going to wait though. I imagine straight after this is when we're probably going to hear back from Dalbert. But anyway, this is it. Newcastle v Napoli, a home game that I'm simulating here as well. Even if it is, we've conceded. We've gotten a red card. It's not looking good. I'm just going to skip ahead. 3-0. It's been shocking. We are not going to make the final. We've picked up a red card. Very, like, within 15 minutes, Giacarini got one as well. Well, that sucks because, like, the plan was that hopefully we would have made the final. I would have played the final and that would have been the one game that we had played because I want to save the start of the Premier League season for next episode. I don't think I'm going to play a game now. We'll just have to focus on making those final transfers in this January. Not January. In this first transfer window. Confirmation now, by the way, that Dalbert accepts his contract and he'll be joining Newcastle for 45k a week. So in he goes then. That now means nearly everyone in the team is 80 rated or higher. It's funny, the only player that's not over 80 rating is only the captain in Jamal Lascelles, which is kind of funny. I do still want to keep Lascelles in the team though as captain, just because, you know, he's the captain. But like, Lascelles and Yedlin are the only like remaining survivors that are currently in Newcastle United's real starting 11 right now that are still in the starting 11 in the career mode. Yedlin's done fucking sensationally. I'm not surprised either. He's really been superb and he's just kept up with the pace and he's kept on growing, kept his spot. Lascelles as well. From time to time, meh, but he's okay. So now then, honestly, I'm kind of just cool with advancing forward a little bit. I want to hopefully field some transfer offers and some loan offers because Right now, I'm only getting offers for players I don't want to sell, like starting 11 guys. Again, like I'm saying, only offers for guys I don't want to sell. Kasper Dolberg, 84 and 20 years of age, 61 mil from Arsenal. I could take them a long way, but I just don't, I just don't want to do it. And again, Thomas Lamar, I'm getting massive offers. I don't want to sell any of these players. Now though, I tell you what, we just received a transfer offer for one player that I honestly might be keen to sell. I bought Wilfred Zaha because we got a massive offer from Bayern Munich uh, that ended up meaning we got a shitload of cash in for Florian Tobin. And in the end, I ended up getting Wilfred Zaha as a spur of the moment replacement because he was doing well. Uh, he seemed like a good overall. I wanted to get him in. Turns out he hasn't really been that great. He has, he's, I don't know. He's just one of those players that has a lot of pace, good on ball stats, good dribbling and stuff. Doesn't really have much else apart from that. Even when he's so highly rated at 83, it, like the rest of his stats don't reflect his overall. So I might genuinely be up for selling him to Napoli. But again, I want to, I'm going to want like a shitload for him. So I'm going to increase the counter offer by 20 million to 58. I don't think Napoli will match that. But if I can get him for about 50 mil, I'll accept it. If that happens, I'm going to literally have to go through the exact same process. I sold my right mat, uh, I sold my right mid in Tovan, brought in Zaha. And now in the next transfer window, I might have to sell him on again. We reviewed your price tag for Wilfred Zaha, and he's not worth that much. They ain't even sending me another counter offer. That sucks. But either way, whatever. If I get another offer for Zaha, I maybe won't go that high next time. Unless it is like Bayern, Real, Barca, PSG, someone ridiculous with an insane amount of money. If it's anyone else, I'll go for like 50. Another player I'm looking at alone, and I tell you what, Brighton and Hove Albion are coming in for all of my players. They bought one of my... Uh, right backs in Nicholas Barcroft, a nice play that I got on pre-contract as a backup, but now I don't really need him. Kevin Mbappé, we're loaning him away again. He's still not really at the rating that I need. John Joe Shelby for, wow, uh, Roma. Again, another play that we could sell for a fair bit, but I don't know. Again, you're going to have to really, this is just, I don't expect this at all, but fucking 47. At least now we're really starting to move on players. I'm liking this. We're selling the Deadwood players. John Joe Shelby, 39.5 million. Oh my fucking God. That is nearly double what he's worth. Wow. And, he, and okay, here's what's up. We have got, uh, in, when it comes to center mid, uh, when it comes to center mids, here's what we've got. We've got like, in, currently in that position, we've got Cyprin, we've got uh, Ramsey, then Fabino, then Shelby. Shelby is our fourth best center midfielder, followed by guys like, oh, I don't know, Harry Winks, and there might be another center mid I'm forgetting, but for 40 mil, I feel like I've just got to take that. I really do. 40 mil for John Joe Shelby. That seems extraordinary. I've got to take it. I mean, for crying out loud, the man is chilling in my reserves right now and he's 81 rated and I'm going to get 40 mil for him. I mean, he was sensational for us in the championship and of course, at times last season as well before we brought in 
Cyprin and all these other incredible players, Fabinho. But yeah, for 40 mil, oh man, you are uh, more than a servant to this club for getting us that much cash, mate. Thing is too, I don't really know if I need to replace him either. That's the thing. And it looks like he's gone. I think now with the cash that we just got from that deal of selling John Joe Shelby, I now have enough to go in for another really good high-rated quality center back, which is the next position I wanted to go for. It might also mean it's the player that's going to kick out Jamal Lascelles, and that means DeAndre Yedlin will be the only surviving Newcastle player. He'll be the last one standing. These are the players we have. We have Issa Diop, we have got Wallace, we've got Koulibaly, and Virgil van Dijk. Now, out of all those four center backs, I didn't really know what exactly their ratings were going to be, except for these two, because they were so highly rated anyway. But I think out of all of those, I want to go for the best player possible, and I do want to get Virgil van Dijk. He may be 27, but 85 rated, man. He'll be... An asset for us, absolutely. And a real standout in the defense. Our defense at the moment consists of like 81, 80, 79, and 80. Like, we don't have a real standout defender, if you know what I mean, when it comes to overall. If we were to get like an 85 or a mid-80s or a high-80s defender in there, that'd be amazing. And I want Virgil van Dijk. I could go for Koulibaly as well, but there are very few things that he seems to have over Virgil van Dijk. Like, the marking, the slide tackle, and the stand tackle seems to be a little higher rated by... Uh, just just a bit, but on-ball stats for Virgil van Dijk and just every other stat, he's so much better. He's so much more well-rounded. I mean, he is the guy that I want the most. And would you believe it? They've accepted 35 mil. That is like literally just a mil or so over his actual value and they've taken it. That's extraordinary. I wasn't expecting that. Absolutely not. But we might be able to make Virgil van Dijk to Newcastle happen very, very easily. I think confirmation coming up. No, not yet. Another transfer offer for Casper Dahlberg. And again, it's like, I'm not looking to sell him. He's 85 rated now. He's over He's over 50 mil with his value. My God, we could sell him now on for 85 million. This is getting insane. I don't want to do it. I've already sold. I've already tried to sell Zaha. I've already sold Shelby. And I'm not looking to sell my, maybe, is he? No, he's not my highest rated player, but one of my best players. I'm willing to sell high rated players that I feel like I can afford to let go. Guys that aren't as crucial. But a guy like Dolberg, no. A guy like Yoan Gufran, yes. Leeds want him a little under his value, but you know what, that's fine. At this point, it's just about getting him off the books. We're surely coming up on the Premier League as well. Day by day, another transfer offer. Isaac Hayden, I want to learn away. Virgil van Dijk accepted his contract. That was so simple. That was ridiculously easy. And look, welcome into the team. And now with that addition of Virgil van Dijk into the Newcastle team, we have got ourselves just a monster. Absolute monster of a starting 11. Everyone in it is now 80 rated or higher. And there's only like very few players that are low 80s as well, like Yedlin, Saar, Dalbert, and they're all going to go up as well. Maybe not Yedlin so much. He's about to hit his potential, but geez, fuck, that's, no, that's an insane team. That's an insane team with some insane depth to it as well. That's what's scary. That's, ho oh, oh. Jamal Lascelles as well, by the way, I tried giving him a new contract and he said he just didn't want to sign it. I thought he was meant to be the goddamn captain and he's doing this to us. That's a joke. Anyway, Mbappe Lotin might be going up to 78 and he does. All right then. I might try it again actually, you know. I offered him pretty much exactly what he was asking for with 35. What if I went 40, 20% and gave you like four years? I don't know. Let's hope. Because I do want to keep Lascelles on the books. First game of the Premier League season will be against Middlesbrough too. Only a week or a couple of days left to go. Are we going to get more offers? We do, but it's for Dolberg again. Pretty soon I'm just going to stop going in for him. But now Sunderland are trying to... Sunderland are trying to pick up so many of my players. Why? It happens so much. Like, no. I'm not selling Dolberg to fucking Sunderland, please. This man though, Isaac Hayden. I forgot to accept this a while ago. But yes, we can loan him away to Watford. Only four days left until the first game of the season. This is where we're going to end it as soon as we get to the 18th. Any more transfer offers? One more notification. I think, I think I'm think i done. I think I'm done fielding offers for him. I'm just going to reject all. PSG coming in big, but not coming in big enough. I'm sorry. It's just rejecting all offers. Casper Dolberg's here to stay. And unless I get another notification, another transfer offer within literally a day, we get two emails, by the way. Uh, oh, here we go. Lascelles refuses to negotiate. Looks like he's just going to be leaving no matter what. But that is that then. We're done. First episode of the third and final season with Newcastle is done. We have assembled the most ridiculous starting 11. It is incredible in just the space of two and a bit uh, two and a bit seasons. It's bullshit. It's actually bullshit how good that team is. I've got both Premier League aspirations winning the title with this team. I think it can be I think it can be done. And then you've got Champions League as well. I reckon absolutely knockouts and going as deep in that competition as possible. I'm telling you man, we are not fucking around. Look at that team.
But until the next episode and the first game of the new Premier League season against Middlesbrough and our first look at that incredible starting 11 team, my name is The Master Bucks. Thank you so much for watching. Before I let you go, let's take a look at the current or former Newcastle player that you have to try to guess. If you know who it is off his career timeline, leave him in the comments down below and you could be featured in the next episode. And until the next episode, my name is The Master Bucks. Thank you so much for watching and have a good one.